Hi folks, my name's Joe Patterson. Thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel. I want to visit about false teacher. This is a very uh, I misunderstood term, phrase, word. It's in the Holy Word of God. Of course it is. The scripture is loaded with warnings about how many false teachers have gone out in the land. I think I made videos about this before, but for some reason, it is so difficult to get people to, to agree on what is a false teacher. Because there are so many, there are many false teachers. Many false teachers have gone out in the land. And so, to, to, to simply define a false teacher, teacher. It would be to teach falsehoods. Now, really about anything. So if you teach a way of math that isn't correct and you go to school where it is correct, then the person that knows the correct way is going to say, you have been shown wrongly. What you have been taught was false. If someone says, was what I was taught, was it true or false? Someone would say it was false. It was the wrong way. It won't work. Okay, now we're getting to an understanding. So false teachers, the ones that we care most about or we should care most about, are the ones that are in the churches. I would call them, you know, I don't, I don't forget all that. They're in the churches, the buildings around the areas that have people gather in the name of the Lord. They believe they're coming together in the name of the Lord. And they many times are taught by people who teach falsehood. Falsehood about tithing. Falsehood about the gifts of the Spirit. About speaking in tongues. About uh, laying hands on people. Falsehoods about marriage and divorce. Falsehoods about sexual immorality and not. Falsehoods about gossip and backbiting and, and, and godless chatter. Falsehoods about what is important and what is not. Falsehoods about salvation. When you're saved, are you saved when you say a prayer or are you saved when you walk it out? When are you saved? Oh, falsehoods. Falsehoods about self-defense, about killing, about murder, about carrying weapons or not, about weapons we use. Are they spiritual? Are they flesh? Are they both? Falsehoods. And all of these falsehoods cause many divisions many so people that would entertain the thought of trying to go to church are hindered with a constant division their heart gets soft they're excited. They want to share what they're, what they testify the glory of God and praise God and all of that. Then the next thing you know, they're going to have somebody talking to them and saying, well, did you get baptized or not? I'm so glad to see that you've turned your life around. Oh, that's just wonderful. Now, did you get water baptized or not? Right? It doesn't matter what they're testifying. It doesn't matter how many tears are flowing out of them. It doesn't matter the rivers of living water are flowing out of them. All that matters to the religious mind is, is did you get baptized in water? Or were you baptized by the Holy Ghost? Did you get baptized with the Holy Spirit? Were you filled with the Spirit? Did somebody lay hands on you? Were you if you got baptized in water, were you immersed? So, all of these things you may well read in your scripture. The problem is, is dividing the word correctly. False teachers do not. False teachers have received falsehood. I've received falsehood a lot of my life. Half of it. Right at it. I don't remember exactly when I came into the truth. But falsehoods, I went to regular churches. You know, what do you call it? You, you know, people aren't afraid to call the stores box stores, big box stores. And I call churches God stores, big God stores. You know, what, what God store did you go to? Well, I went to Church Christ. Or I went to Baptist. Or I went to Methodist. Or I went to Lutheran. Or I went to uh, 
you know, Assemblies of God, or, you know, you can just name all kinds of name brand churches. And that what people would consider, they don't call them stores, they call them churches. But they're stores. They have hours, they have managers called preachers and, and boards set up to run the business just like a regular business. And they have to have members and all that stuff. They have a 501c3 so they can show non-for-profit and then you can write off your any contributions you give are tax deductible. All that kind of stuff, those are all representative and conformative to the way of business, the way the world does business. Anyway, all of that come from the teacher of falsehood. And so people buy into that. It's not in the Holy Word of God. You won't read it there. You don't see it there. They will tell you it is. It is not. It is not there. You do not see that kind of order. You do not see every Sunday they came together, every Sunday, that, and that's just church day. That's the day of church. That's the day of operational hours for church. And now they'll add to those days. Some people will have a Wednesday night service. Some people will have a Tuesday morning thing or a Tuesday night thing. And, and boy, you get real busy at church. You might even start to have a Friday thing. And then and, and, and have somebody there on Saturdays doing some kind of an event, maybe with kids. And then Sunday is a big day. That's when the preacher really going to come in and, and have the, he's going to have the sermon for the week. He's been a week now, and he's going to fill you up with, with what he's learned over the week. not making fun. I'm telling you the truth. When truth comes and you take it as a curse, then you're not loving Jesus. You're not loving the truth. People say they love Christ. They say they love the truth. But yet when the truth comes, they're offended. Because it hits them. So you're talking to me? And you don't understand that the Spirit may be talking to you. Maybe that's why you know me. I guarantee you that I've had people in my life that came by the Holy Spirit to me and gave a correction to me, and I received it. I received it. Maybe not right away. It took a little time. I'm, I've been stubborn. I've been a stubborn man before in my life. I've been a violent man in my life. The violent mean a fit thrower. It means getting fitful, stubborn, hard-hearted, all that stuff, done it all. I don't practice those things. I'm not that anymore. I'm a new creation in Christ. I don't practice those ways anymore. Didn't ever mean to then. I was immature. You have to mature. You got to let go of childish things. False teachers. So here's, let me end the video and get her going here. What is a false teacher? A, ta a false teacher is anyone who teaches a doctrine other than the doctrine of Christ and the doctrine that was received by the holy apostles to the churches. So if you preach any other gospel, any other doctrine, than that which Christ Jesus laid out for the apostles and apostles established the churches on those doctrines and on that gospel, if you preach any other thing than what they said, you are in danger of being a false teacher. So, when correction comes to you, and your pride rises up, and you take offense, and you say, and you start defending, you start deflecting everything that someone is trying to, to examine. And when that spirit in you is being examined and it makes you mad, let me tell you, you should know right now you are out of order with the Holy Spirit. Because the wise man took the correction and got wiser, he was humble. false teacher. Now, once you've determined that someone is a false teacher, okay, it means they're teaching falsely about doctrinal, sound doctrine, sound teaching, okay? For instance, killing. If you believe it's okay to kill people that break into your home, uh, you have every right, God-given right. I believe that is a falsehood. You do not. I believe the Holy Spirit teaches otherwise. So, that is something to find out currently. It's being baked in the ovens of truth right now with some folks. So, here's the thing. 
if that proves out to be false, and you know it is, you don't keep going to a church where there is a false teacher teaching. They're not just going to stop with one thing. There will be many things. Now, they don't think they're false, right? I know that there are people who believe that I'm a false teacher. The problem is there's been times in my life when I was. I spoke about things I knew not in my immaturity. I said things. I went beyond what was written. It was false. What did I do? I repented. I quit doing it. I learned now to be patient and wait on the Lord. Make sure when you speak, you speak as though it's the oracles of God. Don't go beyond what is written. And don't go beyond what is taught. If the apostles didn't teach it, if Jesus didn't teach it, you shouldn't be teaching it either. So, we learn to be guided by the Holy Ghost. Those of us that will come unto God broken and contrite. Those that will walk in humility. So that you're not a false teacher. False teachers will be punished greatly. For they will stumble many. Some will stumble into hellfire. Because of false teaching. So I pray that you can hear this. I pray that it's not offending you. If you're not a false teacher, it shouldn't offend you at all. You should applaud. If it challenges you, and you are, you're, you're, you're considering, you know, you're having the spirit tested, then it shouldn't make you angry. If it does, you already know you're in the wrong. I'm tested all the time. I always tell people I love being tested. Why do I love it? Because I don't want to be a false teacher. I love it when people examine what's being said. Let's go over it. Here's the thing. People, false teachers, they run out of gas. I can I can tell you right now, I've got some friends that I love dearly that, that I was speaking to, I don't know, a year ago, year and a half, however long it's been now, a couple years ago, that I do still to this day love. If you're watching this and it's you, you know I still love you. I mean it. And let me tell you how I prove my love, okay? So it ain't just gas coming out of my mouth. I am willing. If you, anyone is listening to this that has disagreement right now with me, in the spirit, let's just say it's a preacher, teacher, because that's usually who I talk to. And we have disagreement. Let me show you how my love works and what I don't ever get back from the other end. I am willing to long suffer with you and persevere with you. That means let us come together. Let us make every effort to overcome this difference. Let us continue to meet together. I'm not talking about coming to your church and sitting under your teaching. I'm not talking. I'm talking about gathering in the express purpose of overcoming these differences. Let us fast together. Let us call a holy fast. Let's fast together. Let's pray together. Let's cry together. Nobody, nobody does that. I would be glad to do it. If you hear me talking, I'm all in. That's love. That's love in action. I get accused of cutting people off. Again, false. False. It's not true. It's false. I don't cut anybody off. Unless you're divisive and argumentative, and that means that you're not willing to let the Spirit be tested you want to argue about everything. You're divisive about this. No, nobody. Every, every time I bring up a scripture or, or we try to overcome a difference, um, you accuse me of saying that I'm a I'm a uh, out of order and you're wrong and you're just hard hearted and, and 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 all it is is insult upon insult. Then guess what? There's no uh, spirit of gathering in that. We need to come together humbly before our God together. We need to be humble. Know that we're men. Know that Satan is cunning and that our flesh is weak, but our spirits should be willing. Let us come together. Let us seek God together. Let us fast together. Anyway, I hope you can hear it. If you can, then I, then I challenge you in the name of the Lord Jesus. If we have ought, let's get together. Let's not stop meeting. Let's, let's attack the issue in Christ. Let's do exactly what the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul says. Let us not be putting up with differences among us. Let's don't put up with it. How do we not put up with it? We tell, we say to God, no, you have called us to be unified in Christ. You have called us to agree together like, like oil running down Aaron's beard and running down his robe. 
You have called us how good it is when brethren come together in agreement. It won't stop until it's happened. That's what you should have the heart for. Rather than saying, I don't care. I don't need him. I don't need to talk to you no more. If, if the only way I ever will, you know, he'd have to come and, and apologize or say, you know, he's, he's repented. He don't think that way. You know, that's always tell people. It's always me, right? So I hope you can hear this false teaching. You got to know what a false teacher is. A false teacher teaches falsely. And the ones that I'm concerned about are those that teach falsely to me about Christ and the doctrine of Christ and the teachings of Christ and the gospel of Christ. Until next time, thanks for tuning in. I hope your life will glorify Christ.